Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. In this video we have a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! news to discuss, uh, basically in pertaining to our end of match procedures and how those are going to be changing. Uh, and whether or not these are for the good or for the bad, which, spoiler alert, I personally actually hate them. Uh, I feel like they're very flawed, and I feel like they were this close to actually being a good change, but instead they've just been absolutely, like, just ruined, so... For those of you that don't know about what's about to happen, starting on June 1st, the end of match procedures for all Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments from YCS level to regional level to local level are changing. If you are playing in a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament with a tournament structure, no matter where you are, this change pertains to you if the rounds are timed. Basically the old end of match procedures, the ones that are current for when this video is being filmed, is the turn player, when the time is called in the round, finishes their turn, and then five additional turns are taken. So, both players essentially get to complete three turns after the round ends to try to determine a winner in a player interaction method, rather than just being, oh, luck of the draw, I'm the one who's winning right now, so I win the entire match. That all goes away in terms of the player interactivity for end of match procedures and overtime. And instead we get replacement, a replacement in the form of uh, uh, a system that is very easily abusable and very easily gameable, but I'll discuss that more in depth uh, a little bit later. But essentially what we have on screen here is we have the uh, FAQs for YCS New Jersey, which is the first YCS after June 1st, uh, where these rules will be taking place. And as you can see, uh, starting on June 1st, 2018, all Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG organized play will use brand new end of match procedures. Duelists should familiarize themselves with the new end-of-match procedures prior to attending any event. Uh, now, the majority of this, from all of this nonsense, is the same. It's the same as it's always been, you know. If, uh, if you know, time is what ends your match, if one player has a win and the other player has one win, the match is a draw, uh, you determine who uh, wins the game in time by who has the higher life total at the end of the end-of-match procedures, all that sort of stuff. The important thing that changes is down here in bold, and that is continue with the current phase of the game. Once the phase is over, stop the game. That is a very, very stark difference to having six total turns that can be finished in terms of deciding who's the winner of this game. Instead, you don't even get to finish the turn you're playing. You finish the phase. So, if Time gets called and you're in main phase and you're lower in life than your opponent, congratulations, you just lost. Even if you have game on board in terms of monsters, if you spent the entire turn leading up to this point of outing your opponent's stuff through combo sequences or whatever, getting monsters off the field you couldn't attack over, clearing back row to ensure that you could attack directly for enough damage for game, as long as you're still in the main phase, congratulations. Time gets called, main phase is over, game is over, even though you have damage on board for game, you are not the winner of that match. What? <laughs> like... And also, uh, if, uh, if your life points are identical at the end of the phase, the game is a draw. Meaning the game is a draw, meaning that it's very easy to abuse this system in order to make it to where someone wins a match that they shouldn't have won, or make it to where matches draw naturally a lot more frequently than they would under the previous system. How would you win a match if a game draws? Let's say you play a really long and grindy game one, uh, and you have like 10 minutes left on the clock, and you as a player win game one. Game two, your opponent gets to start, and as long as your opponent plays for 10 minutes and doesn't damage your life total, or maybe even plays a combo sequence out that involves them paying life or whatever. Regardless, if your opponent, if the life point totals between both players do not change, and then it becomes your turn, you could just not have to kill your opponent or damage your opponent at all. If you're both at 8,000, that game ends in a draw. You won a game, and now your opponent and you have drawn a game. Match ends with you as the victor, because you're the only one with a game win. <laughs> like, it's so easy to abuse and it's so easy to it's so easy to like scumbag people and cheat them as well like oh you have game on board go away youtube comment oh you have game on board uh and uh there's what 15 seconds left on the clock um okay well i have a couple cards i could activate 
Uh, so uh, you attempt to enter battle phase. Before you enter battle phase, because as a player, I have the right to sign off on you changing phases. Before you change a phase, I have the right to activate cards. Uh, okay, so there's 15 seconds left. Let's see. I'll, I'll think for a, a, a few seconds. Mm, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll go ahead and like activate my set Twin Twister to pop this card. Uh, and I'll make sure that while I'm resolving it, I take a little bit of time, you know, discard my card for cost, all that sort of stuff. Um, oh, oh, what's that? Uh, time is called? Oh, well, we're still resolving my Twin Twister or whatever card I decided to flip. Uh, and so that means we're still in main phase, which means that as soon as this card resolves, you're still in main phase. You can't attack me for game, so I guess I win this match, bro. Sorry, man. You can't enter battle phase under these new rules. Like, that's kind of ridiculous. I feel like these rules could have been much better suited and much less abusable if it was don't end the phase, but in the current turn. That's still a huge takeaway from what we previously had. But at least it allows a turn to be completed and phase ending, like ending your game on a specific phase is really abusable and really like, ugh, it's just, it's something that is going to be a problem. I can, I can just smell it in the air. But basically there is some good from this. Uh, the good thing about this change is that it means that tournaments will end faster and rounds will start sooner. That's one of the biggest problems that Yu-Gi-Oh has right now is that some rounds go into end of match procedures into overtime as it were long enough for there to be a whole nother round of Yu-Gi-Oh to be played uh there are some there are some times where we've ended up waiting an hour to an hour and a half on matches to finish at events and that's another round or two that could have been played in that time there have been multiple events that i've personally been to where they've had to cut a round off of the end of day one because of how late it was getting into the night and they just said, come back an hour earlier tomorrow morning, and we're going to play round nine of this YCS as the first round of day two. There's stuff like that that happens from time to time. It's happened at at least four different events that I've been to. Uh, so this is a change that's good for that. It's very good for that. It means that staff members like judges and tournament organizers can get out of events earlier. It means that as players waiting for the next round to start, things are going to be better for you. It's, it's one of those things where I like this rule change in terms of the logistics of how it saves time and gets people moving faster. I like it as a, I like it from the logistics standpoint of tournament organizers and tournament staff uh, not having to just wait infinite time for results to come in from matches that are being delayed by people slow playing uh, in time. And I like it from the uh, logistics standpoint of as a player who finishes their matches on time every time, and doesn't have to wait for rounds to start. But in terms of as a player that has to be subjected to playing under these rules, as a player that gets forced into time by somebody that's not playing as fast as they should be, I hate it. Because it's very abusable. And the thing is, is that this change came about from people who are slow playing and slow playing intentionally to try and gain advantage to go into time and, you know, do things like that. Or they're just slow playing for the sake of slow playing, because they're just like, if less Yu-Gi-Oh gets played, then I have an advantage, right? The problem is, is that this rule set came into being because of people slow playing. But this doesn't punish slow players. In fact, it incentivizes those slow players to continue slow playing, and if anything, continues to reward them even more than the end-of-match time procedures previously did. If you, as a, as a person, are capable of slow playing in a convincing enough way that you do not get caught, which is actually pretty easy. If you're actually, you know, there's there's different types of, there's, there's outright slow playing, but then there's actually just playing the game in a method that is advancing the game state, but you're just doing a bunch of extra actions, like in combo sequences and stuff that don't have to be performed. Or you're taking, like, making an action in your, uh, in your combo sequence. Take a few seconds to think about the next thing. Uh, like, five seconds. Like, the, the thing that judges tell you when, uh, when, like, they're, when you're sh not sure if you're slow playing or not is that you should be able to make an action every 20 seconds. That is, like, the, the give or take margin for if someone's slow playing or not. If you don't play a card or make an action or take an, take an action every 20 seconds, then you're starting to be considered as, you know, someone who's slow playing. It's very easy for you to game that sort of a system, especially if that's what judges are looking for, and especially considering that there's so few judges per matches being played that they're not just going to sit and watch every match that gets played and determine whether or not every player is slow playing. So, 
it's just one of those things that's awful. And this buffs burn cards in time, because as soon as you're going towards time and end of match procedures, you're just going to be able to side in burn cards, or you could just be playing trick stars and just summon licorice and pass turn, and that's literally like an FTK in time. Because your opponent, if you do it in the right order, right, your opponent will have not enough time to play out a main phase and then enter battle phase. Like, there's just so many things that are abusable under this new rule set by people who are already cheating anyway, but now it makes it easier for them to get away with cheating as long as they're doing it in a justifiable way in terms of, of oh, I'm just playing the game as intended. I mean, I'm just taking a couple seconds to activate my card effects. It's very easy for this system to be gamed, and I'd honestly like to see it be, you know, tweaked and amended. I like the concept of what this was trying to do, but its execution was very poor in the aspect of end the phase, end the game. Hmm, no. Like, you need to give the player that has time called on them the chance to end their turn, because ending their phase and ending the game is way too abusable. It's way too abusable. You can just literally stall with responses of solemn strikes or whatever or just traps or cards that respond to effects as the non-turn player it's very hard for you to be considered stalling at that point outside of very specific circumstances because you're not the one whose job it is to maintain the game's pace it is the turn player at that point the turn player is much more scrutinized for slow play than the opponent because the opponent doesn't know what the turn player has, doesn't know what the plays are doing. So if they have legitimate responses, as long as they have a decent enough time to think about it, then that's fine. Um, I just think that the turn should have ended because like going into end of match procedures for YCS New Jersey, do my entire turn one, pass turn to you, duelist. You have one minute left on the clock. You get to play your main phase. Hope you have a way to burn me because if I burned you, then I just automatically win. Like, it's one of those things that's just going to be really problematic, and I think that this needs amending in some way to make it a little bit more fair, but as of right now, it just, it punishes the people who want to play the game properly and incentivizes people to slow play and or cheat, gain advantage, and outside methods, all that sort of stuff. So, I'm not a huge fan of this in terms of a player that has to play it. But from the logistics standpoint of how much time it's going to save at events and for the staff and for players waiting for rounds to start, I do really think it was a good step in a good direction. But still, like, it needs to be tweaked, obviously. This change is a little bit too strict on when games end because, Jesus, like, as long as the... If you at least got to end the turn, then the turn player could end battle phase and then th at that point you were going to win or you were not going to win. Like, that's fair. But if you get stalled out of your battle phase by your opponent and then the match ends, like, <laughs> rest in peace. But anyway, let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments down below. I've seen almost no positive feedback from this from player base uh, people thus far. So, curious to see if you guys also don't like it as much as I do. But I digress. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Links is always in the description down below to my Facebook fan page and my personal Twitch, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. And any amount of support given is greatly appreciated, no matter how much it is. You are a fantastic part of what keeps this channel going. If you are supporting through Patreon, and you have my eternal gratitude. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.